Turuan mo kami, Panginoon, na lalo namin na maunawa ang kahulugan nito at ito ang aming maging ginhawa, maging liwanag, gabay sa pangaraw-araw na buhay. Kayo ang mangusap, kayo ang mangaral. Ang lahat ng ito dinadalangin namin, pinagpapasalamat sa ngalan ng iyong anak na si Jesus. Walang mamamatay. Sabihin nyo nga sa katabi nyo yan na medyo may feelings. Mahina naman ang feelings. Dagdagan pa. Yan. Kailangan na malinaw yan. Kasi maraming takot at takot sa kamatayan. John 11, 17-21, isang familiar story na ngayon titingnan natin under a different lens para lalo natin makita yung mga iba pang malalalim na kahulugan. When Jesus got to Bethany, He found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Alam na natin ang kwentong ito, na si Lazarus ay namatay, kaibigan siya ni Jesus, pati na ang kanyang dalawang kapatid na babaeng, si Mary at si Martha, kaibigan din ni Jesus. Nabalitaan na ni Jesus na nag-aagaw buhay itong uh, si Lazarus, na malubha ang karamdaman, pero hindi niya pinuntahan agad. At nung pumunta siya sa tahanan ng magkakapatid, ay eh, patay na itong si Lazarus, apat na araw nang nailibing. Kaya sabi agad sa kanya nitong uh, Kapatid na si Martha, kung sana lang dumating ka na maaga-aga pa, hindi sana namatay ang kapatid ko. The belief was that Jesus' physical presence could prevent death. But the truth was, faith in Jesus prevents death. Whether or not Jesus was there physically. John 11:23, Jesus told her, your brother will live again. So there was comfort, there was cheer and hope in the answer of the Lord. Verse 24, Martha answered, I know that he will be raised to life on the last day when all the dead are raised. So dito, Martha echoed the common belief and aspiration of the Jewish people at the time that there is a future rising of the dead, that there is a future to look forward to, that it is all in the future tense. Sabi niya, I know, but that is not yet. I know that he will be raised to life on the last day. So kailangan hintayin pa yung last day na yun. And Western theology for 2,000 years had always fixed this kind of belief to some far away future. It was futuristic when these things were happening during the New Testament times, but had it remained futuristic in the last 2,000 years? Hindi pa talaga ba nangyayari yung raising of the dead na yan? Ano bang pinag-uusapan dito? The raising of the dead of the whole humanity, which is futuristic, or the raising of the dead individually? May last day ang humanidad sa paniniwala ng maraming theologians pero bawat isang individual may last day din. So kailangan pa maghintayin ng individual yung last day ng buong sangkatauhan o pwede nang i-apply sa last day niya dito sa lupa yung pangako. It's a very tantalizing option and a beautiful door to explore, to open and enter that the future that the church had been looking forward to in the last 2,000 years could have already happened and has begun to happen and is applicable now. But going back to the story, sabi ni Jesus, your brother will be raised to life. Sabi nito si Martha, later pa yun, but we are devastated now. We want comfort, we want cheer, we want hope now. That was the unsaid, but that was the body language. That was between the lines. John 11, 25, Jesus then said, I am the one who raises the dead to life. Jesus brings the tenses to the present. Sabi ni Martha, He will be raised to life on the last day. And sabi ni Jesus, I am the one who raises the dead to life. I am present tense. What you are talking about is future tense. Everyone who has 
faith in me will live and I may add spiritually even if they die physically parenthetic yun ha wala dun sa verse yung spiritually tsaka yung physically but I'm trying to add it to suggest clarification of what Jesus was or could have been trying to say or what I believe he was saying I am the one who raises the dead to life everyone who has faith in me will live spiritually even if they die physically faith will bring the physically dead back to spiritual life that should be enough comfort cheer and hope for now John 11 26 and everyone who lives spiritually once more spiritually dapat ibang kulay yung spiritually na yan talks no. hindi yan kasama sa original verse it's my insertion and everyone who lives spiritually because of faith in me will never really die spiritually though they die physically like Lazarus pag kinlarify natin at dinisect yung ibig sabihin para lalong luminaw sa atin everyone who now has spiritual life because they believe in Jesus because of their faith in Jesus, will never really die in a spiritual way, though they might die in a physical way. Faith will keep the physically living, spiritually alive. Now na. Okay tayo mga magkakapatid. We are all physically alive right now. But we are also spiritually alive in the Lord. So dalawa yung life natin. Spiritual and physical. And faith will prevent spiritual death from happening despite physical death. So if anybody of, uh, any one of us should drop dead at the moment, and I hope no one does right now, but even if that happens, your faith in Jesus will prevent spiritual death even if physical death happens. Dalawa kasi ang buhay natin eh, spiritual at physical. Pag na kay Jesus ka, nanyanalig ka, mamatay man yung physical body mo, yung spiritual body mo, hindi madadamay doon. Tuloy ang buhay noon, walang nalagot. Ang nalagot lang ay hininga mo. Hininga nung physical body. Pero hindi nalagot ang yung spiritual life. Life or death of the body, that's irrelevant in our spiritual life. Jesus believers will die physically, but will not die spiritually itanim natin sa isip natin yan kaya ayoko nung term na pag kami mga kapatid tayo na so sa kabilang buhay ay namatay na po si ganun namatay na po so our, really our internal family language for that is gumraduate pag nakatanggap ako ng text gumraduate na po si ganun mm. may sadness ka kasi namatay yung physical body pero may iba ka dapat na nararamdaman na hope Kasi kung graduate siya, ibig sabihin umasenso. Yung spiritual niya na buhay, umasenso. Nakawala sa kulungan ng katawan at lumaya para ganap at lubos na makipagniig sa Diyos who is spirit. Your spiritual and eternal life, meaning your kingdom of God, meaning your heaven, starts the moment you believe in Jesus. You don't need to wait for physical death. It starts the moment you live in Jesusness. At merong shade of difference yung Jesus and Jesusness. Jesus is the person. Jesusness is the spirit of that person. The idea of that personhood. Kaya pasigas ang sabi, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God anong sinasabi doon in the beginning was Jesusness the idea the word the concept the love the freedom the healing so in the beginning was Jesusness and Jesusness was with God and Jesusness was with God and Jesusness was born and became a man Jesus so the concept of the word of Jesusness is not limited to the person Jesus. Kasi the idea, the word is pre-existent before the incarnation. So pagka si Edwin, minuni-muni natin yan, meron ng salvation, meron ng love, bago pa man isilang 
ang naging taong si Jesus kasi si Jesus ay naging tao lamang na verbo o word na dati nang nag exist bago pa ang incarnation. So, paano nagkakaroon ng salvation? All people that believe in Jesus the person after He was born find salvation. But what happens to people who were born and who died before Jesus the man was born? Everyone else, everywhere, every time, who believed in Jesusness, in the Word, in that concept of love, in that concept of godliness, in that concept of the Father's forgiveness and acceptance, everyone who believed in the Word, though the Word had not been incarnated yet, found the kingdom of God. So it extends and expands the horizon of the kingdom of God and the members of God's family. Now it is eternal, permanent and timeless, meaning your spiritual life. Not interrupted even by physical death. Muni-muniin natin yan mga kapatid. Your eternal life that started when you believed in Jesus is not interrupted by physical death. You move from life to life, from glory to glory. John 5.24 Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and he will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. Narinig mo ang turo ng Ama through Jesus. Narinig mo yung dating ideya lang na Jesusness through the person of Jesus. Naniwala ka, tinanggap mo yon. Lumipat na ang spirito mo mula sa kamatayan tungo sa buhay na walang hanggan. Kahit nakatira pa dyan sa katawan mo yan, nagsimula na ang iyong eternity. At oras na namatay ang katawan mo, itinutuloy lang sa part two ang yung eternity, which is now not hindered anymore by your physical body, set free from it, from its limitations, now fully compatible with the Spirit of God. Changed from glory to glory, changed unto a form that was the original Spirit given by God bago ito nakipag-isa sa alabok. Your heavenly spiritual life should not be mistaken for just an extension of earthly life in just another place. Yung iba, katulad ng marami, naku, pagka po ba nasa langit na tayo, maisusuot ko po ba ang aking favorite attire? Ano po kaya ang uulamin natin doon? Ano kaya ang pagkakakantahin natin doon? Ang iniisip nila doon sa heaven, doon sa spiritual life, sa eternal life, eh, Tulad din ang buhay dito sa lupa, lumipat lang ng lugar. Kaya paano po kaya yan? Litong-lito ako kung sino ang tunay kong pag-ibig dito. Sa kabilang buhay po kaya, iibigin ko pa rin silang lahat. So your heavenly spiritual life should not be trivialized. Huwag paliitin with oversimplification and overhumanization. Sobrang natin ginagawa, anthropomorphic yung heaven, ginagawa natin pang tao, in terms of humans, in the way human life is lived. Kaya tinanong si Jesus eh, ng mga tao, paano po yung babaeng pito ang naging asawa dito sa buhay na ito? Nangamatay lahat, isa-isa? Naging legal wife siya noon, pero nangamatay lahat. Sa heaven, sino na po ang asawa niya? So ang nangyari, yung buhay ng babaeng ito, at na kanyang mga naging asawa, ay inililipat lang ng tao sa kabilang buhay at akala nila yun ang heaven. Kaya ang sabi ni Jesus sa Matthew 20.30, at the resurrection, meaning when you're already in the other life, people will neither marry nor will be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Ibig niyo po sabihin ng mga angels forever single, ayang ka na naman, ginawa mo na namang human yung ibig sabihin eh. Ang ibig sabihin lang, yung buhay dito at yung kabilang buhay, walang one-is-to-one one correspondence. Huwag niyong ilipat sa kabila yung mga nauunawaan nyo tungkol dito sa buhay na ito. Kasi sa kabila, iba 
bago ang lahat ni hindi pa sumagi sa inyong guni-guni kung anong nandun. Revelation 21.5 He who has seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Again, ginawa na naman ng Western theology ito na very futuristic sa end times pa lang mangyayari. Wala naman ganun sinasabi. Eh kung pagkamatay mo, ina-apply na to, everything is new. Iba na. Kaya meron pa mga nagsasabi na ko ha, pagka namatay ako daddy, huwag ka mag-aasawa uli, mamultuhin kita dyan. Ibig sabihin, namatay ka na eh, puro selos ka pa rin. Nasa kabilang buhay ka na, puro romance na naman ang iniisip mo sa buhay. Sabi ni Jesus, hindi ganun. Wala nang ganun-ganun. Yung pang dito sa lupa, pang dito lang. At wala kayong ideya kung ano yung nasa kabila. So huwag niyong pilitin na i-impose doon sa kabila kung ano yung alam niyo lang para dito. 1 Corinthians 2.9 But it is just as the scriptures say, What God has planned for people who love Him is more than eyes had seen or ears have heard. It has never even entered our minds. Malinaw. Ang pinaplano at nakaplano ng Diyos para sa atin sa kabilang buhay ay higit sa anumang nakita natin dito sa mundong ito, higit at lampas sa anumang narinig natin ni hindi pa sumasagi sa ating guni-guni. Whatever you can imagine, using earthly and human terms, is not it. Nakaka-excite. Sobrang nakakatuwang isipin na sa dinami-rami na nang nakita natin ganda sa buhay, sa dinami-rami na nang nakita natin mabubutit kaibig-ibig at kaakit-akit, wala yun sa katiting ng ipinlano ng Diyos. At habang hindi nakakawala ang espiritong ito, sa katawang ito, wala siyang vocabulary to understand spiritual things. Kapra-kapraso lang, putaputake, parte-parte, hindi buong-buo, nakatulad ng ginagawa ng Western theology, na buong-buo na nilang ginawa sa guni-guni nila ang mangyayari sa end times, ang mangyayari sa lahat ng panahon, sinukat lahat ng oras, ginawa ang lahat as if extension lang mundo yung mga mayayari sa eternity. Western theology lang yun, ha? It's only one way of the many ways of reading scripture. And yet, nakadictate lahat sa mga Christian churches yung theology na yan. Kaya nakakulong ang mga utak natin dun sa mga guni-guni na mga theologians na nag-interpret ng ganyan. Do not needlessly expend energy trying to figure out heaven. Because Corinthians say, it has never even entered your mind. You have no vocabulary to understand it, to express it, or to articulate it. Because it is beyond you at the present time. So just be excited to be surprised. It is really literally out of this world. Yun ang naghihintay sa mga nananalig, sumusunod kay Jesus. Ang atupagi natin ngayon, heaven on earth. Because the true eternal heaven can wait. Ang atupagin is to bring the kingdom of God here and now. Kaya yung prayer, Thy kingdom come. Nandito pa po kami, magpadala na kayo ng embassy of heaven here on earth. Maranasan na namin ng a slice of heaven, a sampling of heaven. Sa pagsunod namin sa kalooban ni Jesus, we will have the kingdom of God that is within us, that is in our minds, that is in our hearts, that is in our lifestyle. At yung tunay, the real thing, will happen when the Spirit separates from the body. Hindi yung nasa body ka pa, wala kang inatupag kundi yung heaven sa kabila. Hindi ka na tuloy na buhay dito. Hindi na nagkaroon ng kulay, kahulugan, saya, sigla. Ang buhay mo, dahil wala kang inatupag kundi yung heaven that is waiting. But meanwhile, there is heaven now that should be enjoyed now. That's why, ibinaba ang anak ng Diyos, He came down to us. He lives in us bilang advance party nung eternal heaven na yun. So, true spirituality should never miss out on earthly life, on earthly goodness, even on earthly pleasures because they were all part of the package that God wants to give to His people, to His creation. 
Pero pag absent ka na dito sa mundo, dahil nandun na sa langit, lahat ng utak mo araw-araw, sayang naman, nandito ka pa sa mundo. E di sana, pakuha ka na sa Diyos. Sa mga Lord, kunin nyo na po ako, total lang, dyan lagi yung utak ko. Nandito ka pa dahil taga rito ka pa. So panindigan mong pagiging taga rito, because eternal, heaven is endless. Your life on earth is short. Huwag mong sayangin. John 11, 26-27. Sa pagpapatuloy ng kwento, nung namamagit ang usapan between Jesus and Martha, nasabi ni Jesus, mabubuhay ang lahat. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God. You are the one we hoped would come into the world. Nakita niyo yung konsepto? That God would send Jesus or more precisely, Jesusness in the person of Jesus into the world to minister to those who are in the world and then to guide them and take them by the hand to prepare them for the next world which is the eternal, everlasting one. So, Jesus is really the word for the world. Ang ganda nung pangalan. Kasi, nasa dyan yun eh. So, faith in Jesus, the person, makes all this happen. Kaya puspusan ang pagtuturo natin. Hindi natin tinitigilan ang pagtuturo tungkol kay Jesus. Na ang mga tao ay makilala si Jesus, maniwala kay Jesus, manalig kay Jesus, so that the spirit of Jesus, which is Jesusness, will be made real in their lives. John 11, 28 and 32. After Martha said this, she went and privately said to her sister Mary, the teacher is here, and he wants to see you. Mary went to where Jesus was. Then as soon as she saw him, she knelt at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Pareho sila ng sinabi ni Martha. Again, faith. Ang faith nila that the physical presence of Jesus would have prevented it. It would have prevented death. But Jesus already corrected Martha that his physical presence was not the point. But the faith of the person who died, whose body died, but the spirit did not. John 11, 36 to 33, 33 to 36, when Jesus saw that Mary and the people with her were crying, he was terribly upset. Jesus started crying, and the people said, see how much he loved Lazarus? This is wrong theologizing, on display. Hindi naman umiyak si Jesus eh, nung namatay si Lazarus. Nakarating na nga siya doon, hindi pa siya umiiyak. Pero nung nakita niyang lumuluha si Mary, alam niyo si Mary lagi yung mas emotionally expressive. Siya yung umupo sa paana ni Jesus, yung kapatid niyang Martha, gusto magpusina. Ngayon siya na naman yung lumuhod sa paana ni Jesus. Yung Martha, sinabi lang, sana dumating ka agad, di siya namatay. Yung magkaiba yung style nila. So, nung nakita ni Jesus na nag-iiyak tong Maria, na-upset siya. Hindi siya na-upset na namatay si Lazarus. Lagi yun ang reading ng iba, pero hindi naman yun sinasabi ng text. Na-upset siya na sobrang nalulungkot si Mary. Tapos sabi ng mga tao, see how much he loved Lazarus? Dapat ang sinabi nila, see how much he loved Mary? Na nung umiyak si Mary, pati siya umiyak na rin. Kasi kanina pa namang patay si Lazarus, hindi ba nung umiyak si Jesus? Bakit si Lazarus yung loved nung umiyak siya? No. Love ni Jesus, si Mary yung umiiyak dahil may namatay na kapatid. Love ni Jesus, lahat tayong umiiyak dahil namatayan. Yun talaga ang agulugan nitong nangyari. Kaya siya umiyak, nakiiyak siya with Mary. At sino man sa atin ang umiiyak dahil namatayan, dahil ng mahal sa buhay, nakikiyak sa atin si Jesus, na-upset siya na malungkot tayo. At bakit siya na-upset? Kasi hindi natin alam ang alam niya. Ang alam niya, si Lazarus, napabuti. Tapos ikaw, iyak ka ng iyak dyan. Naaawa siya sa'yo dahil sa hindi mo batid at hindi mo alam. Pero hindi kanya sinisisi dahil tao ka lang, kaya nakikiyak siya sa'yo at naaawa siyang bakit kailangan mong ipagdusa ang kamatayan. Hindi naman iniiyak ni Jesus ang kamatayan ni Lazarus eh. Ang iniiyak niya, yung pag ni Mary. 
At tayo mga tao na hindi na uunawa ang nangyayari pag namamatay ang mahal natin sa buhay, ang tendency talaga natin, malungkot, umiyak. But it is wrong. It was the tears of Mary and others. It was the grief of the bereaved. The pain and horror of death from the point of view of people that made Jesus cry. Nakita yung mga pagtitheology sa mga tao sa Bible mismo eh, sa verse 36. See how much you love Lazarus. Hindi ko mo nakasulat yung sa Bible, correct. Kasi hindi naman yun ang tunay na dahilan na pag-iyak na Jesus. Yun lang ang pananaw ng mga tao nagsalita. And they were quoted verbatim. It doesn't mean that the Bible is saying that what they said was correct. So the Word, God's Spirit, incarnated in Jesus, reveals love for life. Love for people. Jesus, Jesusness, is about love for life and for people to the point that it moved Jesus to tears. The Word, God's Spirit, incarnated in Jesus, reveals compassion and commiseration with the bereaved, with the grieving, with the crying. Those who are now crying and mourning, God cries with and for you through Jesus. You are not alone in your pain. You are not alone in your sorrow. God knows. And Jesus, who is the revelation of the invisible God, cries with you. Not for the bereaved, not for the dead, because the dead is alive in Jesus now. But for you, John eleven thirty eight to thirty nine. Jesus was still terribly upset. Remember, not by the death of Lazarus, but by the tears of Mary. So he went to the tomb, which was a cave with a stone rolled against the entrance. Then he told the people to roll the stone away. Ito na naman si Martha, ever pragmatic, ever thinking, ever OC. But Martha said, Lord, You know that Lazarus has been dead for days and there will be a bad smell. Laging warrior itong si Martha eh. Lagi siya nag-iisip. At pag nag-iisip ka lang, in practical terms, magwa-worry ka talaga. Para mawala yung worry, dapat nag-iisip ka in another level, in spiritual level. Yung puro trust ka sa Diyos. Faith or no faith? This, this shows the ambivalence of our faith. Naniniwala siya kay Jesus. If you had been here, he would have not died. Ngayon sabi ni Jesus, o buksan, bulok na po yan. May amoy na. So, paniniwalang, pabalik-balik sa paniniwala at sa pagdududa, sa pagiging very practical and very spiritual. Yun, kita-kita natin kay Martha. And there's a Martha in all of us. John 11.40, Jesus replied, Didn't I tell you that if you had faith, you would see the glory of God? So may faith ka ba o wala? Meron po. Eh, ba't ka nag-aalala na aamoy? Pinapabuksan ko na nga eh. Mas marunok ka pa ba sa akin? Ba't mo pinaproblema yan? To believe is to see. Common concept ng mga tao, to see is to believe. But in matter of faith, those who believe will see. So, Martha got a reminder from Jesus. John 11, 41-43 After the stone had been rolled aside, Jesus looked up toward heaven and prayed. And then, when Jesus had finished praying, He shouted, Lazarus, come out. Binuksan muna yung bato. Bago. Sumigaw si Jesus, lumabas ka dyan. Hindi muna niya hinintay na bumangon talaga at saka nagpabukas. Again, nanalig sila kay Jesus, binuksan nila yung bato, at ang pananalig nila ay nakatulong para maganap ang himalang ito. Bumangon ang katawan ng patay. But we must observe that there was prayer and to power and to bold action that before Jesus did this, He prayed first. Tayo man. Ano man ang gagawin natin? Ipanalangin muna natin. And you will have an inner conviction from God kung yung gusto mong mangyari, yun din ang gusto ng Panginoon. 
Because prayer powers and emboldens. It empowers, it emboldens. When it is in accordance with God's will. Pinabuksan. Tapos wala namang umaling ang asaw na amoy. At kung kailan bukas na, tsaka pa nanalangin yung Jesus, ibig sabihin talaga nananalig siya na magaganap ang ipapanalangin niya kasi pinabuksan na niya muna eh. At nung naganap yon lumabas ang kanina ay pinangangambahang umaaling asaw ng bangkay. John 11.44 The man who had been dead came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with strips of burial cloth and a cloth covered his face. Huwag niyo namang ipanalangin na buhay ng Diyos yung nailibing na natin mga kamag-anak nyo. Kaisa isang example ito para ipakita sa atin ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Hindi para bumuhay ng mga katawan na patay na. Although nangyari yun, kundi para ipakita sa atin na wala naman talagang nangyaring kamatayan. So ipinakita niya in a physical sense na buhay pa yung kapatid nyo kahit akala nyo aamoy na yan. O oh, ayan, nakita nyo, physically, kasi physical lang naman ang kaya nyo maintindihan. So, ginawa ang physical na rin yung pagbangon para maintindihan na ng lahat. Exhibit lang yon, But it is not an expectation that everybody should have. The physically dead came back to physical life. It was the mutual will of God and Jesus that was reached in prayer. John 11:44, Jesus then told the people, Untie him and let him go. Lumabas ang katawan na nakabalot pa doon sa mga telang pambalot sa mga bangkay. Alam nyo, binabalot nila yan, mahigpit na mahigpit, para kung sakali mang mawala na yung flesh, huwag magkahiwakahiwala yung mga buto. So, mahigpit ang tali. Nakabalot. Tulad ng ginawa kay Jesus, nakabalot, nakatali, may takip ang muka na tela. Kaya nung si Jesus ay bumangon, nung sinuot nila Pedro yung libingan, nakita nila yung mga pantali, yung mga tela, nandun nakalapag. Walang laman, pero nandun sa lugar. Ibig sabihin, ang katawan ni Jesus lumabas dun sa lalagyan. Kaya sabi na, totoo nga. Kasi hindi naman niya tinanggal at kinalag yung mga tali. Buong buo pa, naka-assemble pa na wala yung laman. Lumabas si Jesus. Eh ito, hindi naman siya si Jesus. Nakatali pa siya. Nakabalot pa siya. Sabi ni Jesus, kalagan. But you know what that really means? Ganun magmahal si Jesus kompleto. Hindi lang, o oh, binuhay ka na, pero nakatali ka pa rin. Sabi, nakatali po ako. Eh, pasensya ka na, binuhay na nga kita dyan. Magtsaga ka. No, pati tali, pati takip tinatanggal. Kaya yung dalagitang binuhay niya, sabi niya, painumin niyo, pakanin niyo. Kasi alam niya, gutom yun. Matagal yun na naghingalo. Matagal hindi nakakain. Kaya, pagkabangon na pagkabangon, hindi yung sapat na yun para talikwaran siya ni Jesus. Sabi mo na, pakanin niyo. Pag nagalaga si Jesus, kompleto. From the big to the small things. Because, loving people, sa kanila, walang small. Lahat big. Hindi nila mamaliitin ang pangangailangan ng taong minamahal nila. It was a complete ministration that Jesus is about setting people free spiritually, emotionally, and in the level we can most understand, physically. To set people free physically. Ecclesiastes 12.7 The dust returns to the ground it came from at death. And the Spirit returns to God who gave it. Internalizing nga natin ito, pag namamatay ang tao, the body returns to the ground it came from, and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. Yung iba, pinaproblema pa nila, ayaw pang magpa-cremate. Sabi, paano ko mabubuo pag bumalik ulit si Jesus? Pinaproblema mo ba kung paano ka nabuo nung isilang ka? Di ba Diyos ang gumawa nun? So ba't pinaproblema mo kung paano ka mabubuo? Alam ba kahit ilibing ka naman buong buo dyan, di ka i-cremate? Kakainin ka rin ng mga langgam, ng mga paano-ano dyan. Dahil yung physical body mo talaga magiging alikabok. Pag bumaha, aano rin na yan kung saan saan makakarating. Huwag kakaiwaiwalay ka rin. Magiging alikabok ka, tatangayin ka ng hangin, magiging libag ka ng mga dumadaan. Kaya kami saan, libag-libag yun. Ay, ay, ang lola ko ito. Di ba? Kasi nagiging libag yung mga katawan natin. Pero, hindi naman niya nang mahalaga eh. Diyos ang nakakaalam kung anong gagawin niya sa atin. The dust returns to the ground it came from. You cannot stop it. And the Spirit returns to God who gave it. Though Lazarus physically died, 
he remained spiritually alive. Nothing changed in his spirit. In fact, if there was a change, it graduated to a higher consciousness. Everyone who has faith in me will live spiritually, sabi ni Jesus, even if they die physically. 1 Corinthians 50, 15, 50 to 52. I want you to know that our bodies of flesh and blood will decay. This means that they cannot share in God's kingdom, which lasts forever. I will explain a mystery to you. Not every one of us will die. But we will all be changed. Hindi tayo mamamatay lahat. Or better, grammatically, lahat tayo hindi mamamatay. Pero uh, tayo mababago. It will happen suddenly, quicker than the blink of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet. Ito na naman yung last trumpet. Ininterpret ng Western theology as end times sa dulo ng mundo, sa pagwawakas ng lahat. Paano ko ang ibig sabihin ng last trumpet, hindi para sa buong sangkatauhan at sa planeta, kundi last trumpet mo as a person. Na pag tunog ng trompetang huling-huli para sa iyong physical life, you will be changed. And that is consistent with what everything else the Bible says about it. In a twinkling of an eye, pagkalagot ng hininga mo, yung, ah, you are changed. In a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, your last trumpet. Huwag mong isipin yung last trumpet para sa buong planeta. Kaya ito may nagiging future tense eh. Yung pakikipagniig sa Diyos, parang ang tagal pa. But the last trumpet, in a blink of an eye, you will meet Jesus face to face. So niya, the dead will be raised. Lagi na lang sa Western theology, all the dead. Paano kung ikaw yun? You, the dead, you will be raised. Eh paano po yung iba? Eh saka na sila, basta ikaw. Pagkalagot ang hininga mo, kasama ka na ng Panginoon. We will all be changed so that we will never die again. So, binuhay ang katawan ni Lazarus para lang ipakita in very, very physical terms na, hindi siya talaga namatay o ayan na buhay. Eh, paano po kanina? Patay siya. Kaya nga, perception mo lang yun. Sa perception ng heaven, hindi siya namatay. Ikaw lang ang nag-iisip noon. Verse 54, Then the scriptures will come true. Death has lost the battle. Where is its victory? Where is its sting? So yan, talunan ng death dahil kay Jesus. So huwag mong tingnan yung katawan niya. Huwag mong silipin yung bulak niya sa ilong. Diba? Huwag mong isipin yung kamay niya na over the days ay nangingitim-ngitim na sa haba ng lamay. Death has lost the battle. Huwag siya antitigan mo. Wala na siya dyan. Tulad nung mga tao nagpuntahan sa libingan ni Jesus, sabi ng anghel, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Bakit nandito kayo sa sementeryo kung hinahanap niyo si Jesus? He is risen. He is not here. Kaya inaabang-abangan ko, makita sa mga kabaong ng mga kapatid natin na ibinuburol, may malaking karatula, He is risen. He is not here. It's only His body. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, Do not cry. Do not grieve. This is only His body. But because ito na yung pinaka-close na resemblance ng kanyang totoong buhay, so minahalagahan natin, inaalagaan, nilalagyan mga bulabulaklak, sinusutan ng magagandang baro. Tapos, sasabihin mo, para lang natutulog. Ibig mo sabihin, natutulog siya, nakabarong Tagalog. So yung mga uh, ginagawa natin, dahil lang mahal natin yung umalis, pero yung katawan na yun, souvenir na lang ng dating siya. Kaya kumisan ng lungkot-lungkot na inilulubog na gano'n sa lupa. Naku, ang tatay ko inilulubog. Hoy, naku ba? He is risen. He is not there. Hindi na siya yan. Siya yung katawan na tinirahan nung tunay na siya. Masyado tayong physical. Pag masyado tayong physical, ikakalungkot talaga natin yan. So, nasan daw ang tibo? Nasan ang kamandag? Nasa nakapangyarihan ng kamatayan kung pagkamatay pala, gumagraduate ka pa sa mabuti. Wala. Walang mamamatay. Kaya yung mga nagdadramang matanda anak, pag namatay ako, hindi po kayo mamamatay. 
Yung katawan nyo lang, ililibing natin. Gusto nyo now na? Ay, hindi pa. Dahil nakatira pa yung espiritu ko. Yung pala, huwag kayo magdramang bukid dyan. Pag nangyari na yun, tsaka. Tapos natin yang ihanda. Meron pa, naibibili ko po kaya kayo ng, ano, ng memorial plan. Man, anak na on wood. Baka naman ako mamatay. Gusto nyo mabuhay ng 300 years. 1,000 years. Kailangan mangyari yun para makawala ang ating espiritu sa kulungan na ito. Pero sana matagal pa. Bakit? Eh, ito lang naman kasi buhay ang kilala natin. So, hindi pa natin alam kung ano yung mas maganda doon. Ito na ang pinakamaganda na alam natin. Kaya, ayaw natin bumitaw. Pero buti na lang, hindi naman tayo nagpapasya kung kailan bibitaw. Ang Diyos na nagpapasya kung kailan yun mangyayari. So, pinapagraduate tayo. Meron accelerated pa nga eh. Di ba? Sobrang bata pa. Oh, accelerated. Katulad ng mga iba, 12 years old pa lang, lawyer na. Di ba? Accelerated. Pero sana, sa buhay na ito, sa kanay, acceleration, kahit repeater class, okay na. Di ba? Dahil, ito ang kilala natin, ito yung alam natin, gusto natin enjoy yan. Though Lazarus physically died, he went home to be with God. Ecclesiastes 12.7 The dust returns to the ground it came from, and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. 2 Corinthians 5.7-8 But we live by faith, not by what we see. Mga kapatid, pag nakatingin kayo sa mahal nyo sa buhay na nakaburol, nag-aagaw buhay, may sakit, parang kukuhanin na, live by faith, not by what you see. Because what you see will make you sad. But what you do not see, but you believe in, will give you hope and joy and peace. We should be cheerful. Because we would rather leave these bodies and be at home with the Lord. Sabi, ang totoo lang, kung mag-iisip kayong mabuti, mas mainam pa na iwan ang katawan na ito kasi pag iwan mo dito, sa Diyos ka naman umuwi. Parang nasa pier ka. May mahal ka sa buhay na sumakay sa barko. Paglakad ng bapor, sentimiento ka, ayaw mo pang umalis, nakatingin ka pa. Papaliit, ng papaliit, ng papaliit ang barko. Sabi mo, ay papaliit, ng papaliit ang barko. Pero yung Diyos na nandun sa kabilang panig, sabi mo, ayan, papalaki na, papalaki na, papalaki ang barko, kasi papalapit na sa kanya. Point of view lang yan. Yung umaalis sa atin, umuwi sa Diyos. The sisters forgot to walk by faith, they walked by sight. That's why they were sad. But it's natural to be sad. Ah. Hindi naman magdedenay ka na sad ka kung sad ka. Siyempre, nakakamiss yun eh. Nakakamiss talaga. Tsaka malungkot talaga yun. Abnormal naman yung hahalahalak ka ka, tuwan-tuwa ka pa dyan. Pero abnormal din na sobrang kamalungkot kung ikaw ay nasa Panginoon. Kasi unawain mo ibig sabihin na umalis man sa'yo, diba? umuwi naman sa Panginoon. It is our selfishness that should make us sad. Because actually, dapat natin ipagbunyi na nandun na siya. Though Lazarus physically died, he transferred to a much better place. Philippians 1, 22-23, I don't know what to choose. I could keep on living and do something useful. It is hard choice to make. I want to die and be with Christ. Because that would be much better. But of course, Paul or the students of Paul speaking in behalf of Paul, eh, iba naman kasi yung spirituality niya, kaya he'd rather die. Tayo, alam natin, normally, we'd rather live. Saka na, okay, to die is gain, pero to live is Christ muna tayo. Kaya nga dapat sulitin mo yung buhay dito. Philippians 1.21, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I would apply this, I'd say, habang buhay ako, Ipapamuhay ko to para kay Jesus at ayon sa turo ni Jesus, hindi ibig sabihin puro sacrifice ha? Kasi si Jesus was always eating, was always drinking, going to weddings, going to feast. Hindi ibig sabihin na to live is Christ eh. Papapayatin mo na yung sarili mo, kadi jeta. Wala ka na yun. Tupag ko di mag-deposit sa heaven bank. Dapat enjoyin mo yung buhay mo dito, yun din ang ibig sabihin na to live is Christ. To minimize pain, to maximize pleasure, and to do the most good. And then when you die, tanggapin mo that it is gain. Imagine si Lazarus, nasa ama na. 
kangangalgal nitong kapatid, ipinatawag pa uli. Paglabas niya siguro doon sa bato, sabi niya, O oh, ano? Nananahimik na ako, iyak-iyak pa kayo dyan. ba? Diba? So kasama ko na naman tong nager ko na kapatid na si Marta. Kasama ko na naman tong ngal-ngalerang kapatid ko si Mary. Ano ba kayo? Nananahimik na ako. Oh. ba? Diba? Grabe kayo, pakry-cry pa kayo. Ayan tuloy, tinawag pa ako. Eto na naman ako. Sa palagay nyo, di ba yun ang dapat sasabihin ng isang nakatikim na ng langit, ipinatawag pa uli? O oh, ano, magbabayad na naman tayo ng kuryente, ng tubig, di ba? Dapat kayo na lang naman problema niya, damay na naman ako. Huwag na kayong cry ng cry dyan, baka tawagin pa ako, di ba? Sabi na lang nung gumraduate, tayo man ay mga Mary at Martha din. Nauulila, nalulungkot, umiiyak. Tandaan na lang natin, nakikidalamhati sa atin si Jesus at ang Diyos. Revelation 21, 3-4 And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and He will dwell with them. Yun yung sinasabi ni Jesus nung pa, that thy kingdom come. Kaya hindi dapat kailangang isipin lagi ito na malayong future because this kingdom comes to everyone who believes in Jesus and accepts Him. Hindi ito future tense. Lagi lang ginagawang future tense to ng theology coming from the Western Bible schools. Reading lang nila yun. Kailangan mo i read They will be His people and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the older order of things has passed away. What if that is not totally futuristic? Or, nung sinasabi, futuristic, but happened within the lifetime of the original hearers, na tayo ngayon, hindi na yan future, past tense na. Kaya dapat, tahan na. Luke 9.27 Punawain nyo to, tandaan nyo Luke 9.27, isulat nyo yan, tandaan nyo yan. Nagtuturo si Jesus tungkol sa tinatawag na end times, tungkol sa pagbaba ng langit, tungkol sa pakikipag-isa ng tao sa Diyos, tungkol sa pagkakalaya natin mula sa mundong ito. Sabi ni Jesus, truly I tell you. Pag sinabi niyang truly, may emphasis yun. Sa Tagalog version, sa totoo lang. Truly I tell you, some of you standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Hindi ito talinghaga. Ang tinutukoy ni Jesus, in your lifetime, my original hearers, which was 2,000 years ago, the kingdom of God will come. At ano yun? Abang tayo ng abang ng second coming as if it's some future, future, future far away. What if the Pentecost was the second coming of Jesus? Because sabi niya, I will never leave you, I will send the Holy Spirit. Kasi kung sinabi naman ni Jesus, I will never leave you, I will send... Tapos yung pala, 2,000 years nang wala pa siya. Hindi eh, ba? Iniwong ka na rin noon, 2,000 taon na. So niya, I will never leave you. I will send the Holy Spirit. Tapos sabi niya dito sa mga tao, all this will happen in your lifetime. Tigilan natin yung aiisip ng future na napakalayong end times because when Jesus died and lived again and the temple was destroyed by the Romans, it was never rebuilt. There was a world that ended. It is the world of the temple, the world of sacrificial religion, the world of temple sacrifice ended. That was the world that ended. The world of religiosity dominated by sacrificial systems in the temple. And why did it have to end? Because Jesus is now the temple. Samya, destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. And the Bible says he was referring to his body. That stone temple ended forever. Yun ang end of the temple world. Pag sinabi namang end of the world, hindi ibig sabihin end of the planet. Halimbawa, the world of artistas, the world of mothers, it's a figure of speech. The world of a certain thought, the world of communism, the world of materialism. So sabi ni Jesus, the end of the world. What world was he referring to? Because there was a world that ended during the lifetime of these people who were his original hearers. The world of the temple. The world of the priest-dominated religion that always offered sacrifices with their prophet. 
Kaya nung si Jesus ay pumasok sa Jerusalem, inaasahan nila magsisimula na ang Kingdom of God, matatapos na ang world na ayaw nila. Tapos ang ginawa ni Jesus, pumunta doon sa templo, pinagtataubi yung mga mesa doon. Tapos umalis na siya. Yun ba ang end of the world? Yes. It was the end of the temple world because what Jesus ended when He overturned those tables was the commerce of sacrifice. The culture of sacrifice promoted by the temple that was always monetary, giving a lot of profit to some people and to the priesthood, but making the life of the people miserable and He set them free from all that. That temple world ended. Pag iniintay niyo yung end of the world, yung planeta sa sabog, magkakabulkan-bulkan, tsunami lahat-lahat, kaya natatakot kayo sa end of the world. So matalag yung end of the world na yun, sabi niyo, maraming mga paghihirap na mangyayari, ganyan-ganyan, yung mga nagbubuntis, dapat ipanalangin niyo, huwag maganap habang kayo naglilihi, etc., etc. It happened in AD 70 when Rome destroyed Israel, when Rome destroyed the temple, burned everything in response to the Jewish revolt. And from that time on, the Jews were dispersed and for 2,000 years, there was nothing there. And up to now, there is no temple. Tapos yung mga iba mga romantic, gusto nila ngayon mag-contribute ng pera, rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Why rebuild? Para mag-sacrifice ka ng mga baka doon? Ng mga kambing? Sinacrifice na nga si Jesus. By that one single sacrifice, God is perfected for all time, all those who will believe in Jesus. So why rebuild the temple? Because the temple is for animal sacrifices. Mag-isip-isip ng konti. Masyadong emosyonal tungkol sa ganyang mga bagay. At unawain yung sinasabi ng scripture, apart from theologizing of others. Kita nyo, nag-theologize yung mga tao, ay, umiiyak siya kasi mahal niya si Lazarus. Nakalagay sa Bible, pero hindi na totoo. Umiiyak siya dahil naawa siya sa mga umiiyak. Review your understanding of scripture. Huwag kayong matakot yung end of the world na yan. Nakakatuwa nga kung darating na si Jesus eh. Pero second coming, hindi pa ba siya yung pinadala niyang Holy Spirit? I, mean, I will send the Holy Spirit to you. Pentecost, buhay pa silang lahat, dumating na. Tapos abang pa tayo ng abang. Kung si Jesus was represented by the Holy Spirit, at abang ka pa ng abang na si Jesus talaga dumating, eh third coming na dapat yung hinihintay mo na yan. Kaya yung mga tao, ligaw na ligaw, laging natatakot, laging umiiyak. The kingdom comes in their lifetime. Sabi niya, some of you are standing here today, you will never taste death. It will happen before you die. And what happened before they die? The temple world ended in AD 70 and the Holy Spirit was given at Pentecost in their lifetime. Natupad ang sinabi ni Jesus. Unless, mali si Jesus. Dahil, kung iniintay mo yung hindi pa dumadating, edi hindi totoo yung sabi niya na, in your lifetime this will happen. Review, mga kapatid. Mga theology lang naman sa laban ng utak natin, yung mga nabasa natin sa balutan ng tinapa, yung mga napulot-pulot natin kung kanikanino, nakuha natin sa librong sinulat na kung sino. Dapat yan, reviewin niyo lahat. Let the Bible speak to you. Don't always rely on people to tell you what the Bible means to them and that it will be what the Bible means to you. Asa pag-aralan. Go direct to the scriptures dahil ang daming lihis na theology. Tayo man ay Lazarus din. Even though we physically die, we remain spiritually alive. Absent in the body, present in the Lord. Acts 7.59 While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Hindi niya sinabi, receive my spirit 2,000 years from now after I die, huh? Sabi niya, now, they are stoning me. This body will die. Receive my spirit now. Kaya napakalaki ng mga textual evidences that when your spirit leaves your body, that is the end of your physical world, but the beginning of your eternity with God. Kaya hindi dapat ipagluksa Hindi dapat sobrang ipagdalamhati. Bagamat normal na meron tayong mga emosyon na malungkot. We will all face death, some with notice, some without. But I believe that a person who is facing death, kahit walang premonition, kahit walang mga pahimakas, 
siya mismo alam niyang yun ang mangyayari. Pray Stephen's prayer. Sabi niya, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Tapos eto yung mga kamag-anak mo, Diyos ko, ibalik mo po siya, ibalik niyo po siya. Hay! Nireceive na nga ako ni Jesus ha, tumigil na kayo dyan. Darating din kayo dyan. No? Yan ang talagang panapanahon lamang. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17-18 We will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Salamat, Panginoon. Dahil hindi kami kailangan maghintay ng matagal bago kayo namin makaniig after our physical death. That at the last trumpet, our personal trumpet, at your last call for us individually, when the body separates from the spirit, you will receive us. We pray, Stephen's prayer, our Lord Jesus, that when the time comes, we like to tell you, and even now that it has not happened yet, we like to tell you in advance, receive our spirit, please. Pagbulay-bulayan natin ang lahat ng kahulugan nito sa ating buhay, manahimik sumandali, i-apply sa ating mga katanasan. Pag may sumasa kabilang buhay, maging sa pagharap natin sa ating sariling, personal, na kamatayan ng katawan. Lord, continue blessing your people as we bow before you in silence.